I think that the extruder that comes with the Ender 3 is a bit too much bare bones. So I decided to upgrade it to this beefier all metal extruder. So uh, this is the normal standard extruder that comes with the Ender 3 and as you can see it's very basic and uh, the construction is a bit uh, flimsy for, for a lot of people and also the brass uh, the brass uh, gear that uh, comes with it it's already worn out and my printer is uh, pretty new so I would say that this is uh, not really a reliable component I've seen over the internet that in a lot of cases you have a wear on this hole where the filament goes in and also in some cases the brass insert that keeps the bearing in place cracks or actually the plastic around it cracks and uh, it breaks off. So this is for sure a part that a lot of people is upgrading and several of the options are actually around the, basically the same exact thing but uh, done made in aluminium. Um, I didn't really like that because one of the things that annoys me the most out of this is the fact that when you're feeding the filament through here you're actually moving the insertion point and uncovering the holes that goes through the Bowden tube. So you, you see it here that the, the wheel is actually in the way so basically when you try to push it in you will always have a hard time uh, playing a bit around with this spring to make sure that you have um, you have uh, the correct alignment between the filament and the hole. And this is something I don't like. So I decided to go for this one instead. Now this is, you know, I assembled it on the extruder motors just to show you how it will look like in the final assembly. And you see that there is a much sturdier construction and this is actually uh, built with the purpose of having a di direct extruder directly mounted on the motor if you want to put the motor just on top of the hot end, which I'm not going to do. Uh, because I don't like the fact that this is quite heavy and uh, I suppose that this could uh, lead to some artifacts in the print. So I don't want to go down that road. But still, what I like of this one is that you have an alignment, you have a straight direction from where you're feeding the filament to your Bowden tube. So on the paper, this should be better in terms of that one. And I'm going to guide you through the assembly of uh, this one. And you can also see uh, there is of course going to be a link in the description. This came pretty cheap. I bought it from uh, AliExpress and it costs me less than seven euros. So pretty much inexpensive. So let's go and find out how I made it and how I put it on the machine. This is all the material that comes with the kit. We will need some extra screws because uh, I'm not going to install this uh, directly on top of the hot hand, but I'm going to uh, install it in the original bracket and the screws that come with, come with it are a bit short. So we will need that. Out of that, I think it's uh, pretty complete and there's uh, everything that is needed to this for the assembly. We will start by removing the knob and also taking out the extruder from um, uh, its uh, assembly. Uh, just beware because uh, when you remove uh, the last of the screws, uh, then the motor will come loose. So you will have to hold it with your hand, otherwise uh, it will, there is a risk that it falls uh, down and we don't want to do that. Now we're unscrewing uh, one of the last brackets. This is the one that holds the lever in place. And after that, there is one last screw to take out. And uh, as I said, beware that it doesn't fall on your uh, build plate. Now we gently remove the motor and uh, we take out also the connector. And uh, you see that um, the brass gear is already worn out so and this machine is is pretty new so i would say that this component is definitely not really reliable better not use the uh, the ball end of the allen key uh, to take out small screws this is uh, you know a practice i recommend all the time um, then you will need to get the uh, slider and you have to put the bearing on top of it one of the sides of the slider is threaded, so uh, you will have to thread it uh, that way. And then you will have to adjust the tension you put on the spring because this will uh, stop the rotation of uh, the bearing if you tighten it too much. And you can assemble it in both directions. So I am going to assemble it in the direction that is more useful for 
using it from the front. So um, this will put the um, the fitting of the boat into, or actually the fitting on the other side, quite close uh, to the threaded rod. So make sure that uh, it doesn't touch. There is some play on the or some gap in the holes, and make sure that when you're fitting it, it doesn't touch. Next, we're going to use this uh, new M3 by 16 screw, and uh, this is not really needed, but I, I find it helpful to keep the spring in place while you assemble it. Uh, because these springs uh, are, yeah, of course, springy, and uh, they tend to fly a bit around all over the place. I found that one is, uh, to me, uh, quite stiff enough, so I am uh, starting with one, and then uh, we will see uh, going on in the next days if uh, I need to install the other one, but uh, I don't think so. Uh, the screw can be removed in the end. Now, we are going to assemble the gear on the motor. Uh, it makes sure it is roughly six millimeters from the bottom of the gear to the bottom or to the top of the flange of the motor. Uh, this will ensure that uh, the teeth will bite in the right place and also you have some uh, space for a knob on top of the motor. The motor should be held in place by the spring force, but uh, double check before letting it go. As you see now here, it, this is. Uh, uh, just old or held by the force of the spring um, so I left it alone uh, but you don't want to ruin your build plate so um, yeah you have to be careful with that uh, next I just uh, put in the four screws and then you have to push a bit with a bit of force because uh, the spring is going to keep it out of place so play a bit around uh, with the screws and make sure that they fall into place and tighten them in an X pattern, so uh, this is quite normal for when you're tightening all flanges in a mechanical assembly uh, to make sure that uh, the pressure is as evenly distributed as possible. Then you will need to install this cover, uh, the two small ribs go on the bottom and uh, it's uh, pretty simple, it goes uh, single way. And there's a couple of screws to hold, uh, hold it down. And uh, this is it, more or less, so with that one you're done, uh, and if you have uh, um, assembled it correctly, you will have the space for the knob. You can take away that screw, I'm taking it out because uh, it's a bit uh, hard on the fingers when you're pushing it uh, to insert the filament. Last one, you screw in your Bowden tube, and uh, this is pretty much it. Finally, you get the knob. You will get the link in the description for this uh, Star Wars uh, Imperial uh, kind of knob. It's not my design, but I like it a lot, so I recommend it. And of course, don't forget to refit back the connector. Now I'm cutting it the, the piece of filament on an edge uh, as recommended, and then uh, I will try to fit into the. Uh, into the extruder without paying so much attention uh, to what I'm doing and this is because uh, the best uh, feature for me would be to um, that this is getting straight on so you should be inserting or should be able to insert the filament without uh, so much of a fuss which is not really the case as you see there is something that knocks on the filament so uh, I'm going to try to straighten it a bit with my fingers to see if it helps um, but I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, that there is uh, something in the teeth of this uh, uh, fitting that interferes with the hole, uh, which is pretty tight. It's uh, probably two and a half millimeters or so. So there's not so much space for the filament to go around it. Um, yeah, I tried it several times, uh, but it doesn't seem to, or it goes up to a certain point and then it kind of sticks, or it's kind, it's kind of blocked by something. Uh, I tried to play a bit around of it, and also I removed the cover to have a better look, but uh, yeah, in the end it seems, as you see here, that there is something that is sticking inside the hole and it's preventing it from uh, going correctly inside. Uh, I will give this a try in the coming days and to see if it works. Uh, finally, I put back the original fitting of the Ender 3 on the left side, or the right side, sorry, um, because uh, that's quite close to the threaded rod and I didn't want to have, you know, I want to have as much space as I could.
Okay, so I assembled it on the machine and uh, my impression is uh, relatively good. I think it's well built, it's quite sturdy and also it comes with two springs. I have only assembled one because this is, to me, quite enough. Um, I will check it out, how it's printing uh, in the coming days because as you know my printer is a bit out of order uh, still so I'm going to check it a bit later on. I'm not impressed by the fact that it's not easy to thread the filament through it, so the main reason why I bought it, it's not really going to be fulfilled. I'm going to give this a bit more of a try. I have, to, I have understood that you have to strengthen a bit the filament with your hands and then uh, kind of pushing it through. There is also something strange in the connector, because it looks like the teeth that bite into the Bowden tube are a bit coming in on the inside, so I'm not sure that the fitting that comes with the printer, or actually that comes with uh, with this extruder, is the best uh, possible uh, to use. Uh, but for some reason it's biting very, very firmly to my Bowden tube, so I tried to put it out and I couldn't. So uh, I'm going to see if I will manage to use it or if I have to cut a bit of the Bowden tube and replace it with another one. So in general I would say that for a very cheap price and a sturdy construction that's okay if you want to have you know a much more reliable component. If you like me want to see to to look, you're looking for something that is you know kind of easy to thread your filament through it maybe this is not exactly much better than the other options that are out there. I hope you like what you see. Uh, if you do that please subscribe and um, see you next time.